Wrocław Poland, a quaint city that's played an important role in European history. In the final week of August, it also played a big part in the history of World Cup archery. Athletes traveling here from around the globe to try and do what had to be done, conquer everything and everyone standing in the way of a berth at the World Cup final. The word Poland actually means land of fields. And the field here at this fourth and final stage of the 2013 World Cup circuit was as strong as any seen this summer. The best in the sport, taking one last shot at securing a spot in the city of light. Well, with so few spots still available, the competition would be fierce. Yes, Rotswath has seen thousands of years of history, making this a fitting site to provide the backdrop for even more. When the last arrow had flown, it was finally known exactly who would be crossing that bridge and heading for Paris. The pressure in Poland greater than ever. That quickly became apparent in the elimination rounds in women's compound. In the team competition, the Italians took on Korea. Tonioli, Anastasio, and Longo facing Choi Bo Min, So Jung Hee, and Sok Ji Hyun in a battle that came down to the final shot. Turned out to be a close call, but after close inspection, the Italians wound up winning by one point to qualify for the gold medal match. Whom would they be facing? The Colombians or the Americans? Maya Marcen, Sarah Lopez, and Alejandra Usquiano had certainly emerged as major players on the World Cup scene this summer. But Carly Cochran, Tristan Scarvin, and Erica Jones were one of the more powerful teams contending here at stage four. And when the dealing was done, the USA was on its way to the big show for a big time showdown with Italy. This gold medal matchup between the Italians and Americans would prove to be a test of youth versus experience. Tonioli, Longo, and Anastasio came into this contest with quite a bit more experience between them than their American counterparts. Of course, Erica Jones is considered a veteran at the age of 25, but this is Carly Cochran's breakout season on the World Cup Tour, and Tristan Scarvin would be making her first appearance ever in a World Cup event. Now, after building a five-point lead midway through the match, the Italians saw that lead cut down to three, heading to the fourth end here on the grounds of historic Centennial Hall. The sun shining brightly on the fans and Carly Cochran, who opened things up with a bullseye. That set the tone for Tristan Scarvin, who followed up with a 10-spot of her own. And that took some of the pressure off Erica, who delivered a solid shot, shifting the pressure to the Italians. Laura Longo responds. As does Anastasio. And the same goes for Marcella Tonioli. Back to the Americans now. Carly Cochran catching the line. Good job. Ten on the right. Win a little bit blonde. Tristan Scarvin hoping for better, but okay. Mrs. Okay. Jones has got a thing going on yeah, with the ten ring, and Team USA still in the game. All right. Laura Longo gets the adrenaline going for Italy. Anastasio keeps her coach at a fever pitch. Antonioli puts Italy over the top. It's Italy's first ever team gold medal in women's compound, and the victory sets off a celebration for these three women and their coach, all experiencing the uninhibited emotion of a special historic moment for Team Italy. The trio of Longo, Anastasio, and Tonioli going into the record books. Yes, it's the first medal that we've won in the World Cup with the women's team. What's more, it's our first gold medal. 
We came together again in this World Cup stage after having shot with other teammates at some of the other stages, which led to some difficulty. So we're definitely very happy about how things went. We were able to maintain the advantage until the end. Everything went very, very well for us. The Italians surviving a close call in the semifinals with Korea, and they wind up making history. In the men's team semifinals, the Koreans would once again present a strong challenge, but this time it was the Americans having to overcome this hurdle. After getting by Poland and Denmark, Rio Wild, Braden Galantine, and Dave Cousins were still up for the task, emerging with a three-point victory to survive and move on. Meanwhile, the Dutchmen hoped to do the same. Led by Peter Elzinga, the Netherlands knocked heads with some burly boys from South Africa who were making a rare World Cup appearance. And they were out to make the most of this trip to Poland. After beating Indonesia and France, South Africa knocks off the Netherlands. And then they set their sights on the United States. South Africa had only captured one team gold medal ever, and that was in 2010 at the expense of the USA. Now the Americans once again stood in the way of a second team gold medal. Gabriel Badenhorst, D.P. Biermann, and Patrick Rue would be on target number two on a breezy morning in Wrocław. Meanwhile, the United States would be on target number one with the first and second ranked archers in compound. Rio regaining the top spot from Braden by virtue of a wild victory last month in Medellin. We pick up the action after 18 arrows. The red, white, and blue leading by two, picking up a single point in each of the first two ends. Badenhorst leaves one on the line for a nine. DP Biermann does one better. And Patrick Rue is right about where he wants to be. But there's a reason Real Wild's ranked number one, and here's why. Dave Cousins, he once held the top spot himself. And here's why. Braden Galantine was number one up until just a few weeks ago, and he helps build the lead up to three. Badenhorst, needs a bullseye to start South Africa's comeback. At this point, a nine might not be enough. Bierman does come through with a bullseye and now needs Patrick Rue to come through with one of his own. Consider it done. So the U.S. needs 27 points to put this win in their pocket. Rio starts the stretch run with a big time shot. Dave Cousins does his part, catching the line for a nine. And that leaves Braden needing a seven to tie, eight or better to win. Yep. Braden brings him home with a nine. Plenty of room to spare as the American trio takes a tough two-point victory and gets a little payback for that loss to South Africa three years ago. The United States wins it 232 to 230. Feels like home to get to the finals venue. Uh, all the other matches, they're preliminaries for the main event. and. Uh, it's nice to be up there with two other guys you have complete faith in, and, and I definitely think it was a huge advantage for us to be seasoned veterans up there shooting against a team that's had good luck in the finals but is, is still kind of unexperienced. Uh, look at the, uh, they're looking for a re rematch when we get to Turkey, so it might be fun. There were lots of close calls during the elimination rounds, but one of the closest had to be in the compound mixed team event. Mexico found itself in a real fight with the Russian Federation, and the first 16 arrows settled nothing. It was tied at 153, so time for a shoot-off. Mexico shot well, posting a 9 and a 10, but the dynamic duo from the Russian Federation fired a pair of bullseyes 
and that was that. On the other side of the bracket, the Netherlands had come through against England, beating the Brits by the exact same score. After beating Belgium by five, the Dutch duo took aim at the Americans. Inga van Kaspel and Peter Elzinga putting up a fight, but to no avail. The United States prevails 158 to 155, setting up a showdown between two longtime rivals. This showdown, solid gold. Albina Loganova has been one of the top compound archers for quite some time, and it looks like the Federations finally found a guy who allows them to compete in mixed team. Alexander Dumbayev, just 24 years old, but he's been ranked as high as 20th. Teamed up with Loganova, he gives Russia a chance to battle the likes of Erica Jones and Braden Gelanti, each currently or recently ranked number one in the world. Braden coming off that gold medal performance against South Africa while Erica's out to improve on her silver medal that she settled for against Italy. We'll pick up the action midway through the match. The U.S. almost perfect 78 points. Dombayev and Loganova trying to keep pace. They're just four back. Dombayev getting more comfortable as the match goes on. We head into the third end where Loganova leads her shot just outside the 10 ring. Erica Jones not quite as generous. She's going for the jugular. And so for that matter, is her partner. That four point lead is up to five. The daring young Dombayev aims just a tad high on that shot and Loganova's shot drifts just a little bit left. That presents an opportunity for the US to increase its lead and Erica's not about to let a chance like that slip by. She puts a dagger right down the middle. And Braden backs her up with a shot just inside the center ring. That lead now stands at seven points with just four arrows to go. Not an insurmountable lead, but it's still a big hill for the Russians to climb and not a lot of time to make up that much ground. Try as he might, Dombayev can't come up with a 10 when his team needs it most, so it's up to Albina to keep her team's hopes alive. At this point, they're flickering hopes, and the flame's about to go out thanks to Erica Jones. She provides a comfortable cushion, so comfortable, Braden's nine is no cause for concern, especially after Dombayev and Albina can each muster only a nine on each of their final shots. Time for the partnership of Jones and Galantine to bring this case to a close. Erica essentially puts the final nail in the coffin, but leaves it up to Braden to make it official. The final count, probably not as indicative of the Americans' domination on this day, but a seven-point win isn't bad either. It was good enough to get the job done. Beautiful weather for the finals here in Poland, but that isn't always the case during World Cup competition. That weather has a lot of influence on shooting because wind, if it's strong like it was a month ago, World Cup Medellin, it was almost impossible to shoot. With wind conditions, for example, it's uh, it's more that you that I aim off, or you can have your bubble in another place uh, towards the wind uh, to have it to have it centered. And, and on raining conditions, I have to adjust my side a little bit, yeah, lower. To, uh, to compare to, to the rain because yeah it, it, it drops on the arrow and you can, uh, you can really feel that. If the sun was going to shine on Korea's Choi Bo Min, she would have to win her bronze medal match. She still had a shot at qualifying for the World Cup final in Paris next month, but for that to happen, she would have to win this match and defeat a woman she had never faced head to head. Germany's Christina Berger burst upon the scene a year ago, making a seamless transition from pistol shooting to archery and making it look easy. Ranked fifth in the world, this sharpshooter was 10 and four in match play coming into this encounter with Korea's Choi Bo Min. What a tranquil setting for a tense and suspenseful scene. After three ends, there's just one point separating these two archers. 
Christina trying to increase her lead. And Ms. Choi staying right with her. Another nine by Berger, who secured a spot in Paris. She falls behind by one thanks to a bullseye by Choi Bo Min. Christina counters and so does the Korean. Advantage goes to Choi Bo Min with three arrows left in her quiver. The seesaw battle continuing in the fifth and final end as Christina Berger regains the lead. Ms. Choi grabs it right back. Christina just can't seem to miss. But Choi Bo Min does. So we're all tied up with one arrow to shoot. Ms. Berger makes hers count and puts a ton of pressure on Choi. But the pride of Korea comes through in the clutch, and so we have ourselves a shoot-off. Tied at 143, each woman will shoot one last arrow to decide the winner. Closest to the center takes the match. Christina will get the first crack at it. And once again, she shifts the burden onto Choi Bo Min, whose hopes and dreams are riding on this last arrow. And this is where the story comes to an end. Those hopes and dreams evaporate as she puts her final shot just a tad too high. A difficult pill to swallow for Choi Bo Min, who is as gracious in defeat as Christina Berger is in victory. This one had all the drama and suspense you could hope for, and in the end, Germany gets the bronze medal. Great rivalries are great for sports. In tennis, it was Chris Everett versus Martina Navratilova. Now in archery, we have a rivalry building between Albina Loganova and Erica Jones, both World Cup champions, and one has captured the title at the World Championships. They've met eight times in head-to-head -head encounters, and the 25-year-old American champion has come away victorious on five occasions. Erica Jones ranked number one in the world right now, and Albina Loganova right behind her, ranked number two in the world standing. We join this match after the third end, and as usual, not much separation between these two superstars. Right now, it's Albina actually leading by three, but Erica aims to do something about that. Eight, seven. She Six. is dead center. Excellent, job. Excellent job. Albina's hand, steady. But her shot just a bit off center. So there's an opening for Erica. And she takes Good. it. Ten, nine o'clock. Good highs, slightly left. Albina recovers with a bullseye of her own. But Erica's got that Jones for the ten ring, and she completes the trifecta. That's your Beautiful. See, this starts falling right Loganova brings this end to a close with a nine, so the lead is now down to one. It's anybody's game with just three arrows to go. Loganova leading 114 to 113. Jones keeps the heat on with yet another 10. No surprise, remember, she's leading the race for the Longines Prize for Precision and she's in position to move back into a tie when Loganova leaves this one in the nine ring. Now it's Erica really applying the pressure. You got it. Another one more, one more. Just one more good shot. That's all you but that's nothing new for Albina. She's been there, done that, and she does it again. We're tied at 133. Erica has been consistent up to this point, but when she wavers just a bit, Loganova cannot make her pay for it, at least not yet. The fans going to get more than they bargained for as we are heading for yet another shoot-off. Erica Jones erasing that three-point deficit on her final six shots 
in regulation play. Most great competitors prefer to shoot first in this situation, hoping to put pressure on their opponent. But at the most critical moment in the match, Erica doesn't just leave the door slightly open for Albina, she leaves it wide open. And Loganova knows exactly what to do. She takes her time and puts it right on the line. Just when it looked like the victory might be slipping away, this battle-tested champion comes through in the clutch, adding more fuel to the fire in a rivalry that has now seen Albina Loganova win four of the 10 meetings with Erica Jones. I am happy because this match came just before the World Cup final and before the World Championships. It's a big step for me to win against Erica before the main part of the season. She is very strong. This season, she scored very high results, but I hope I will show what I can do at the World Championships and the World Cup final. And of course, I'm always happy to win a World Cup event. Coming in to stage four, Albina Loganova was sitting in fourth place in the World Cup standings. Erica Jones holding down the top spot just one point up on Sok Ji Hyun. But after that battle, the two rivals are now running one and two in the standings as we head to September's final in Paris. Last but not least, not hardly, two more heavyweights going head to head in the men's gold medal match at stage four in Wrocław. Sergio Pagni, one of the most familiar faces in our sport. This is his first appearance this year in the men's gold medal match. Of course, the same holds true for the Frenchman, Pierre Julien Deloche, who's still after his very first individual gold medal. And he's also trying to beat his Italian nemesis for just the second time in six tries. Lots of anticipation in Poland for this match, which is tied at 58 all after the first two ends. Pani will begin the third stanza, shooting a nine. Pierre Julien Deloche matches that nine. Back to the left-hander who straddles the line and ups the ante. Deloche delivers a 10 to remain even. Sergio's ninth shot of the match is, ironically, another nine. He's not pleased, but Pagny's world looks a lot better after Deloche strays into the eight ring. The Frenchman is, for the moment, down by one. But his fortune changes, and after the next three arrows, Deloche is singing a different tune, on top by two, with three shots to go. Sergio's opening salvo is close, but Pierre leaves no doubt on his first shot of the fifth and final end. Pagny rebounds with a bullseye, but he needs a break, and Deloche does not seem inclined to oblige him. Dis for Deloche. Sergio takes one last stab at it. If he's going down, he's going down swinging, but he is going down. Needing only eight points to win, Pierre Julien Deloche emphatically puts Sergio Pagni away. He never gave the great Italian another chance to get back into this one and closes out the match by three points, winning his first individual gold medal in World Cup competition. And he gets the job done against one of the best in the business. Pierre Julien Deloche building confidence and momentum as he heads home to France for the World Cup final. The eight was due to a small wind which came gently and pushed my arm. I had to let it go because the time was running out. I work a lot on my release. I didn't think too much and I said to myself, it pushed to the right. So I will move the sight to the left. And that turned out to be the correct decision. Time to check the men's leaderboard before and after. 
prior to Poland, Delosha was on the outside looking in, but after picking up 25 points, he is now in the picture for Paris, along with Sergio Pagni, who catapults into fourth place after winning the silver medal at stage four. So the field is finally set, and it's on to the City of Light for the World Cup final in September. Follow all the action on archery.org. For now, we bid you farewell from Wrocław, Poland.